Hello and welcome. In this video we are going to backtest the Bollinger Band trading strategy presented by Reina Tio. Why so many Reina Tio backtests? Besides them desperately seeking his attention, the advantage of shown strategies is that they have defined parameters, so they are quantifiable and testable. As always, these videos are not meant to prove someone wrong and the results are deviating due to a bunch of factors which I already mentioned in previous videos and I also refer to later on in this video. So please watch Rainer's video beforehand to understand the strategy. Anyhow, let's quickly go over it together. So the considered market is the Russell 1K and we are checking if the stock is trading above its own 200 day moving average. Also, we are checking if the close price is below the lower Bollinger Band calculated with a 2.5 standard deviation on a 20 day time frame. In case you are not familiar with Bollinger Bands, I will link a video in the video description explaining it and implementing it in Python. If those two conditions are fulfilled, we are placing a 3% by limit order or rather a 97% by limit order on the close price. The selling condition is just two day RSI should cross above 50 or after 10 trading days, I will not implement that in Python. I've done some spot checks. It doesn't make any or a big difference. So we are just checking the two day RSI crossing above 50. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, we need some libraries, Y Finance to pull stock prices from the internet. We need TA, which makes it easier to calculate technical indicators. NumPy for some conditional checkings and we need pandas for data handling. That's already it. And now we are just pulling stock price data for let's say Apple. So I'm creating a variable here, df for data frame. Use Y Finance download function, provide the stock ticker for Apple and pull price data from the beginning of 2015 until the end of 2021 here. All right, and with that, we are ending up with a data frame like this containing open, high, low, close and the adjusted close column. Now, as we are working with stocks, we have to take the adjusted close column here. To make things easier, I'm just setting the close column to the adjusted close column. So the close column contains the adjusted close value, right? So I'm doing that like so, just setting the close column to the adjusted close column. Now, first of all, we want to calculate all our technical indicators we need. So we need the 200 day simple moving average. And we also need to calculate the 20 day Bollinger Band with a 2.5 standard deviation, right? And we need the RSI as well for our exit condition. So we are doing everything in one function, which I'm just calling apply indicators which is taking a data frame as an argument. And first of all, as just said, I'm creating a new column SMA 200 for the simple movie average over 200 days. And I'm just rolling over the close column 200 days and take the mean out of that. That's calculating the simple movie average over 200 days. Same for the 20 day simple movie average. We need that for calculating the 20 day uh, Bollinger Bands. So I'm just renaming that to 20 days and adjust the window to 20 days as well. Now we need the rolling 20 day standard deviation, just calling that SDDEF. And again, roll over the close column with a 20 day window and take the standard deviation. Now the upper band is just taking the 20 day simple we average plus 2.5 times the standard deviation. And for the lower Bollinger band, same, but subtracting 2.5 times the standard deviation. So, this is just the calculation of the Bollinger Bands. As said, I've covered that in another video on my channel, which will be linked in the video description. Last but not least, the RSI. We need that for the exit condition. We can just take the TA library, 
then the momentum functions and then the RSI. Apply that on the close and take a two day window. And with that, we have already created our uh, technical indicators, which we will need for this strategy. So we can just call this function on our data frame and ending up with the data frame like this containing the new columns. Simple, we average 200 days, 20 days, standard deviation, upper, lower band, and the RSI. All right. So just if you are interested in that, it's not really part of the strategy, but if you want to plot a Bollinger Band, you could do that by, let's just take the last 250 uh, rows here and then plot the close, the SMA 20, the upper and lower band Let's see how this looks like. So now we see we have the Bollinger Bands plotted, right? Just to give you an idea of what's going on here. Okay. Now let's move on with defining our conditions. So our both buying and selling conditions, right? And again, we are creating a function to do that. So we are just calling that conditions, taking a data frame as an argument. And we are starting with the buying conditions. And here we are using NumPy where to define a Boolean column, which is containing a one when the buying condition is, or the buying conditions are fulfilled and a zero when the buying conditions are not fulfilled. And we are checking, first of all, if the close is above the 200 day simple movie average, right? So we are checking close is above DF SMA 200. That's the first condition, right? Next condition is we are checking if the close is below the lower Bollinger Band, right? So we are just checking close, smaller, DF lower. These are our conditions, right? And now we also want to check one thing. And that is if our, or we need one more parenthesis here. And additionally, now we have to check if our limit by order would have gone through. And to check that, we could just consider the next day's low and check if the next day's low is below or equal to 97% of today's close. I already did that in one of my previous videos and many people complained, hey, this is a forward looking bias. It isn't because we are just checking if the limit by order would have gone through at all on the next day. And if we don't have a low, which is below 97% of the close price, the order would have not been executed. So we wouldn't have a trade here, right? So we are including the uh, buy limit order here as well. So as I said, we are checking 97. So 97% of the close price should be above the low of the next day. And I'm just shifting the low price one row back here to check that. Okay. So again, I'm just checking here if on the next day, the low is below or equal to 97% of today's close price. All right. So if those three conditions are fulfilled, I want to have one in this column. If not, I want to have a zero here. All right, so these are my buying conditions. Selling condition, straightforward. NumPy where the RSI is above 50. All right, that's the case. I want to have a one. If not, I want to have a zero here. And that's all right for my conditions. But I also want to define the buying and selling price within this function. So I want to create a new column here, 
which is containing the buy price. And the buy price is pretty straightforward. As we are placing uh, 3% by limit order, the buy price will always be 97% of my close price, right? And for my sell price, as defined, I'm just taking the next day's open. And I can again do that by just shifting the open row one row back. So I'm defining the sell price as open shift minus one. All right. And that's it for my buying and selling conditions. So I can call that function on the data frame again, ending up with our data frame containing new columns, the buy and sell column as Boolean columns and buy price and sell price. And next, we want to find the actual trades here. And an actual trade is consisting of buying the asset and selling the asset. And as an example here, we have a selling signal here, but we didn't buy the asset, right? So there is no trade here. And to get the actual trades here, I'm following an approach which I've already covered in one of my previous videos. I will link that in the video description, but we will go through that step by step to together. So first of all, I'm filtering this data frame for only those rows containing a one here, so in the buying column, or a one here in the selling column. With that, I'm getting rid of all those zero and zero rows, which I don't need to calculate my strategy's return, right? So I'm doing that outside of function first to make this more clear so that you see what the steps are doing. So first of all, we are filtering a set for uh, the ones in the buy column or the ones in the sell column. Let's print that out. And as you see, we get only those rows containing either a one here or a one here. Now, how can we find the corresponding trades now? We could take a look at the values when they are changing, right? So when there is a change between the rows, right? So for example, here you see no change. And we can quantify that by using the difference function from pandas, which is just subtracting one row from the previous row. Let me show you a certain part of this data frame, which is containing a buying and a selling signal. So here you see we have a buying signal. And if you would take the difference now between these two rows, you would get a one here as the difference, right? Because we have one minus zero is one. And we are keeping this row here if we are filtering for only those rows containing a difference value of one. And the same we are doing for the selling column. And you see again, we have a change here, zero to one, one minus zero is one. So we are keeping the selling row here. Imagine this would be zero. So we don't have the selling condition fulfilled and we are selling in this row. Then imagine we have zero here and we have one here, then the difference value would be one here and we would sell the asset here. So to find the corresponding trades, we can filter for the difference signal being one for the buying column or one for the selling column. And with that, we're getting the matching trades. So let's, let's do that. So I'm calling that matched for now. And I'm filtering for first of all, the buying column, apply the difference function, just the difference between two rows being one as just explained, or the cell difference value being one. Okay. So if we are taking a look now, you see that we're getting a corresponding trade. We have a buying value here and a selling value here, right? We bought on 
uh, at the end of uh, February 2020 and we sold uh, 2nd March 2020. Right? And this is our logic and we will wrap that into a function. So let's call that match trades. And now I have deleted that. Wait, let me just copy paste that from my helper screen here. So we are doing exactly what I did, but we are returning the match by buying and selling signals here. So if we would call that again, match trades on our data frame, we're just getting the buying and selling values as you saw before. All right, so let's store that in a variable trades. And now we could calculate the profit of this trade and that's a very straightforward logic. So you see we have a buy price here and we have a sell price. And we need to take the sell price of this row here. So we could just shift the sell price row one row back and just subtract the buy price from the sell price, right? But from the shifted sell price, one row shifted back sell price. And we are dividing that by the buy price to get the relative profit. So let's define profit as, and then as said, we are shifting the sell price uh, column by one row and subtract the buy price. And we are also setting that in relation to the buy price to get the relative profit. So let's print that. And as you see, we made 16% on that trade. What you also see is that we are getting an NAN value here, which makes sense because we shifted the sell price row by one row and we don't have any value here and we are subtracting uh, this from this and that won't make sense anyway, right? So the second value here, we have to get rid of that. So we are just reassigning that, skipping every second uh, value here. So we are just ending up with the meaningful and real trades profit, right? So let's do that all again for another stock. So maybe we are lucky and getting more trades here. So let's take another fancy one, Tesla, for example. Just execute everything again. And as you see, we are getting more trades here. And now it's quite interesting how they how the data frame is looking like. So you see, buy one here, sell one here, buy one here, sell one here. And here you see the dates. Bought on the 3rd, sold on the 16th bought on the 5th, sold on the 11th, and so on. Now, profit. And as you see again, we have to get rid of every second value here. Doesn't make any sense, right? So we have to execute that again. And these would be our Tesla returns with this strategy. Okay, so that's it for this video. The next part is going to be quite interesting because we are backtesting over 1k Russell stocks with this strategy. So if that's interesting for you, please leave this video a like. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Bye bye.